Hello everyone, nice to see you. Before the 31st anniversary of the Tiananmen massacre, I shared a video. It is an open letter to U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. In this open letter, Hong Kong businessman Elmer Yuan made some very bold points and requests. For example, he said that since the People's Republic of China has reneged on all its obligations in the joint sign up British declaration about Hong Kong, Hong Kong's sovereignty should revert back to the UK. And he asked Secretary Pompeo to convince UK to do the right thing this time by transferring the sovereignty back to the people of Hong Kong on the condition of a engineering referendum in six months, supervised by ind international and independent judges to choose their own future. He also said this to Pompeo, before the referendum, we need your troops to keep Hong Kong safe as Western Berlin from the communist never-ending interferences, infiltrations, cheating and persecution of our youths. Your 85,000 US citizens in, UK, in Hong Kong also need your protection. Well, the author of this open letter, Mr. Yuan, is currently in the U.S. and lobbying for the future of Hong Kong. Today, we have the pleasure and honor to invite him to join our program so that we can ask him some questions that we are interested in knowing. Some of my questions were suggested by, by my social media followers. Hello, Mr. Yuan. Yes. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity in your busy schedule. Could you please, first of all, introduce yourself briefly to our audience? I'm a businessman uh, and uh, I'm 71 years old. And out of the 70 years, uh, years, about 30 years in Hong Kong, 20 years in China, and 20 years in the States. And when I was in the States, I stayed 10 years in uh, Manhattan. So I know quite a bit of New York. Uh, uh, and uh, I do very different kinds of business, lots of uh, venture capital. And uh, uh, then I was the first one to actually do, to start a production in China in 1977, when they first opened up and uh, invested. Uh, also, we built the biggest golf course uh, across the border, the Mission Hills, uh, with uh, two, two other partners. And I left uh, uh, Hong Kong in 96 and uh, came to stay in uh, New York for 10 years. And later on, went back to Beijing, stayed for 10 years. Knows a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people by, for my age. And uh, um, I've never been uh, uh, involved with politics. And uh, the reason is, uh, last year, I go to every protest because I believe in uh, Hong Kong uh, being able to uh, have its own um, election of, the, uh, of our legislators and of our chief executive. So that's why I go to all, I always go to attend these protests because uh, we are protests that the, 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 the CCP or the Communist Chinese uh, have, re have been reneging and dragging on their promise to Hong Kong. So uh, they've been uh, reneging against the Sino-British Joint Declaration, right? That's the agreement between the British and the Chinese uh, to hand over Hong Kong. So um, this is what I believe. Uh, the Chinese have failed, or the CCP have failed, to live up to their part of the bargain, right? They, were, they promised the British they're going to let Hong Kong people rule themselves. Now, all of a sudden, they're talking about introducing a new law, a uh, national security law. By doing that, they will send their own police, their own prosecutors, and even their own judge, meaning that they can do things the way they do it in China. And as you know, it's a lawless country. The, the People's Republic of China. There is no law. Law is only for appearance, all right? Everything is controlled by the, by the party. And so that means they are going to uh, destroy the entire one country, two system. And uh, this is why I feel that the sovereignty right of Hong Kong 
should not be should be reverted to UK because originally it was under control by UK and UK since they since they've left uh, Europe uh, yeah, Brexit Brexit they are not interested to uh, take back Hong Kong so they should uh, rightfully they should uh, allow give it back to the people citizens of Hong Kong before 1997 because that's the handover and let us have a referendum international supervised referendum and let us choose our own future whether they like to stay with china or stay with the you uh, uh, the british or self rule so this is what i'm been proposing and uh, also i think the um china, the, the ccp over the last 71 years the the the, um, the republic of china was uh, was formed in 1949, same age as me. And uh, in the last 71 years, they have committed huge crime against humanity. Huge, all right? Uh, I've listed almost 10 of them. And every time, millions of people died, all right? Millions of Chinese died. But of course, they closed all the information. So some were forgotten. We know a little bit outside but these are huge crimes against humanity. So my responsibility here is to go for legislation, try to ask USA to legister, uh, legislate uh, the CCP as a criminal organization because of the crime they've committed in the last 71 years. And also to go to a federal court, maybe asking some public prosecutor, federal prosecutor, to, uh, to, to sue the uh, CCP as, uh, as a uh, criminal organization using the RICO Act, RICO, you know, the uh, racketeering. And, uh, and, and if they become a, um, uh, like an organized crime or like a criminal organization, then uh, all their members, uh, China have, uh, uh, CCP has 90 million members will be a criminal. Uh, every one of them will become a criminal. And uh, we should subject them to the most severe sanction, which means them, their, their, their relatives, their uh, business, their bank account, everything will be frozen. Uh, I think uh, you have the most severe, what is called the Magnoski Act. Sorry, I'm not good with Russian. Yeah. But, uh, but, uh, but that's what I, I'm pursuing. And, uh, but in the last uh, two weeks, I've been here for two weeks, I have seen that the uh, Trump uh, re-election status looks terrible, all right? Uh, I don't think he's going to win the election if he keeps on uh, tweeting and doing nothing. So that's why I'm very worried because he's the leader of the free world. And if he fails to be re-elected, then we have a disaster worldwide, not only for US or China, but worldwide. We need a leader, leader against the CCP, all right? And I don't think Biden is, uh, I, I don't know much about, you know, he's, I don't think he, he, he has the leadership or the, the strength to fight with the CCP. The CCP, the whole idea of communists is to take over the free capital of the world. And uh, this is the whole objective. You know, you should really, everybody should read about Karl, Karl Marx, Karl Marx, uh, the capital, and also about uh, uh, the uh, declaration or every communist member, they must swear. You must read what they swear. They want to control the free world. The whole idea about this communism is they want to control all the money or the capital in the world, all right? So the whole, the, there, it, there will be no, nobody, everybody will be treated the same. This is their idea, all right? Everybody will be treated the same. No, no different from na Nazism, all right? Nazis. So, so uh, I'm very, very worried after I come here and uh, read about it. And uh, 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 I think uh, uh, Mr. Trump is worried about the, the stock market. But in the meantime, the enemy that have killed over 100,000 Americans 
uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, they also create, they've been uh, funding the, uh, the rioters, the looters in, 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 uh, in the last uh, month or so. So uh, they won the first round, which is the pandemic. They won the second round, I think is the, uh, the riots. And now they're gonna win this third round, which is really killing Trump's uh, re-election. That's what I feel. It's, it's a very uh, serious matter. So um, I'm glad you have an interview. That's my, that's my honest opinion. Yes, I understand. So tell us who have you met with and uh, what are the responses? Uh, you said you are lobbying uh, for the U.S. to designate the Chinese Communist Party as a tourist or a criminal organization. So do you think how possible that the U.S. Uh, is going to do such a thing? Uh, to be honest with you, I, I'm so worried because all these things I wanted to do before takes time. You know, it takes time. It takes a few months. But in a few months, maybe uh, President Trump will not be the president anymore. So whatever I lobby for or work for is useless. You understand what I mean? I'm, we are counting on the, uh, the Trump administration to continue to, uh, to, to fight with the CCP because they are the evil empire. We need to get rid of them. But if the administration change, and then you have a softy to be the next president, then everything I've done is, would be a waste of time. Recently, the CCP actually disclosed some of the details of the national security law they are going to pass for Hong Kong. And people say it may be as bad as feared. So tell us what you think about the latest development in Hong Kong. It's very simple. Those are only uh, dressings. Basically, once they pass that law, which is going to happen in a, one, in a, in a week, Hong Kong is going to be like uh, Samjian or Shanghai, which means, you know, there is no it, th people living in those cities, even they might live in nice apartments and so on. But spiritually, they are slaves. They are, you know what I mean, all right? They cannot talk. They have a firewall. And, uh, and uh, I mean, they, they, their children, the minute they start school, they have to wear this red scarf, which make them a pioneer. I mean, uh, basically a young communist, all right? Is that the way, you know, you like your children or grandchildren to become? So Hong Kong will be like that, it's over. So that's what it is. And I was hoping to come here because I heard the uh, Secretary Pompeo was talking about standing with Hong Kong. Yes. I don't see how he can stand with Hong Kong by doing nothing. But U.S. did have passed the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act and did talk about remove Hong Kong special status if the CCP pushes forward the national security uh, law. So you think there's no hope at all for Hong Kong? You are used to talk show. I'm not. I want to see action. All right. Talk is cheap. I've, hear, I've been hearing a lot of talk, Hawaii talking in Hawaii, coming back and talk. Show me the action. Show me the action. You say you stand with Hong Kong. How? Show me. Uh, how about the people of Hong Kong, especially those young people who have sacrificed so much in the fight against the CCP? On the one hand, they have won admiration and support worldwide. But on the other hand, it seems that their efforts failed to stop the CCP's suppression. So tell us what... They would be very disappointed. They would be very disappointed because they believe, all right, freedom. And they believe America, all right, is the leader of the free world. Mm -hmm. And the U.S. have the best system in the world. But yeah. uh, right now, it's really a matter of leadership. So tell us what the people of Hong Kong are thinking now and what they plan to do if the situation gets worse. Whoever can afford will leave. Nobody wants to live under this communism, right? You, the, even the mainland, they are sending all their kids out to school, you know, 350,000 students from China, mainland China, because they believe the future is America. Now, of course, many of them have to be sent back. So Hong Kong people will leave 
the kids even are going to leave. Right? There are many countries. Uh, basically, the uh, UK is accepting a lot of them. The, uh, the, uh, the uh, Australia, Canada, uh, 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 even USA will accept a lot of them. Now, now even the uh, European Union are accepting a lot of Hong Kong Chinese. They are very talented people. These are hardworking kids right? with uh, no natural resource. All they have is their brain and their work. So I think they, they have value. But as far as Hong Kong is concerned, it's finished. Oh, really? Uh, I have a question from a Facebook follower, and he asked, what can the people of the world, especially in Western countries, do to help Hong Kong and to take down the CCP? Write to your president. He has all the power. Are, he has a hundred ways he can fix this. But he's reluctant. He's looking at the Dow Jones. That's all he watches, right? The Dow Jones. So if he wants to do something, he has to pay a price. Yeah, I know. But I think in the US, we do have Congress. The president can do a lot of things, but Congress can also do a lot of things in terms of... I was in the Congress today. There was a hearing, right, on the pandemic. Who's responsible? Mm -hmm. I was there. And it's okay. I love the, the system. But you cannot expect the Congress to do something immediate. Mm -hmm. Takes time to, and, and with this part, but partisan, you know, uh, fighting, infight going on, they are not passing any law. You can ask all the congressmen. Nothing is happening. Whatever the Republican proposed, the other side will not support, and vice versa. So the Congress is a long term solution. In the meantime, the, 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 the CCP have been buying time. You see it? You see how they delayed the whole trade negotiation? All right? They were buying time and getting closer and closer to the re-election. Then they know they, all they have to do is support Trump's enemies. And if they can get rid of Trump, their tro all their trouble is over. So the Congress can do very slow and very limited action. So if you want quick action before the re-election, it has to be the administration. It has to come from White House immediately. And they have to show result before October in order to be re-elected. Re and action is needed now. So do you think uh, whether the U.S. has the incentive to act now and what is the consequences if they don't act now? Not a matter of U.S., it's Trump. Right now, Trump is, in, is, is the, the president, all right? His incentive is to be re-elected. And if he does nothing, he will lose. So have you uh, somehow tried to uh, pass on this message to him? You go to the wartime pandemic tomorrow. That's what I'm going to say. You got a preview of what I say, what, I was, what I'm going to say tomorrow. Okay, good. Watch the wartime pandemic tomorrow. War room pandemic, sorry. Yes, I know that program. Uh, I also have a question from a Twitter follower. I think he is from India, so he asked, uh, what should be India's role in Hong Kong's fight against CCP? Is the current government doing enough? They should send in a million military and get rid of those uh, 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 people's, uh, Repub uh, liberation, <laughs> people's Liberation Army. I mean, that's what you do. I mean, India has a tremendous advantage right, on this uh, uh, on this uh, uh, on this side, you know, uh, because of the ge geography, they should go and uh, and get rid of those uh, uh, People's Liberation Army. What two, three hundred thousand? Send in a mi million with tanks and everything, the latest weapon. And I think U.S. is on your side. Okay, good. That's your message to India. 
Uh, I think now the CCP is facing a lot of internal crisis. Do you think there is any possibility that people inside mainland China somehow they will uh, stand up uh, and uh, uh, try to get rid of the Chinese Communist Party? And especially I think US is talking about tear down the Great Firewall in three months. So if that happens, do you see any hope in China? In the long run, you know, for even if the firewall is down, it takes one or two generations to, for the people to, re, to be re-educated by the outside world, by information. Right now, they are 90% believe the virus came from US. All right, that's how bad it is. So for them, you take down the firewall, it takes a long time, maybe one or two generations for them to learn the truth and to, and to have to share our same, the same value, maybe even three generations. So it's going to happen, but we are not going to be here. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, so I, <laughs> and, uh, and, also, and also, you know, the, the econom economics in, uh, inside China is very bad. Right? Over 200 million people are out of job because their export, China relies on their export. 80% of the employment is done is by the private enterprises. And the, half of the private enterprises are involved with export. And the export is, is finished, all right? Because the world market with the pandemic, nobody's buying. And even those European or American company buying, they don't want to have any more made in China. The, the minute the consumer see made in China, they say, I don't want it, I don't want it. So all the buyers for this department store, is that we'd rather go to India, we'd rather pay more, but no more made in China. That's the truth. So what happened is 80% of the employment are by the private sector, and half of them are, 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 are for export, meaning 40% of the total employment will be unemployed, already unemployed, sorry. Um, I think with this pandemic, many ordinary citizens in the world are getting very angry about the CCP releasing this virus to the entire world and causing such huge economic and human life losses. So do you think there is anything that ordinary citizens in the world can do to help uh, achieve what you want to achieve, that is to, to take down the CCP? I think the Chinese are very isolated. There's no question. They're isolated. And, uh, but, you know, they are very smart. They are really deceitful, truly deceitful. So they know how to divide and conquer. They will hit the European first. Because there are certain countries like Germany or even Japan, they are weak. They want money, all right? They want to have business. So China will divide them and say, oh, we do business on only with you, but you have to support us. So somehow the, Chin the communist Chinese are very, very good in deceit. So they will, they will be able to recover slowly. That's what I feel. So, so it's, uh, we, are, we are fighting a losing battle. So tell me, what's your incentive to fighting a losing battle? Uh, I know many businessmen, if they have business in China, they are very reluctant to criticize the CCP uh, in case they will lose their business, business opportunity. So what makes you do what you are doing now? I don't want my children. I have six children and uh, four grandchildren. I do not want them to live under such a regime. Right? Such, uh, such kind of uh, uh, tyranny, tyranny, it's basically a tyranny. So, uh, and if really uh, push come to shove, they just have to move out. But they love Hong Kong. All my kids love Hong Kong. And you know, you've been in Hong Kong. It's a wonderful city. It's the best city in China, or even the best city in Asia, right? I mean, it used to be, uh, at night, before 1997, it used to be wonderful. None of this trouble until the CCP came over. Now, now the, uh, the liaison office, over 4,000, they are controlling Hong Kong, over 4,000 Communist Party members controlling Hong Kong. Right? So the Hong Kong government is really a pap puppet. That's all they are. Uh, we don't run Hong Kong. The CCP 
fear and alcohol. So do you think, uh, is there any bright side for the future of Hong Kong at all? And what can people do under such circumstances? I'll spend a few more weeks hoping that uh, President Trump will change his mind and uh, taking action, not only for Hong Kong or for China, but for United States, right? You don't want to end up with another, uh, you know, another Obama type of uh, a president. You need somebody strong for to to recover your 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 economy to recover. So if he wakes up, then you know I stay as long as possible. But if it's hopeless, then I have to leave. Mm -hmm. If the CCP really passes the national security law and the U.S. continues uh, to do nothing. Uh, so do you plan to leave or what do you intend to do? I, if he does nothing, then uh, I think uh, he will not be elected. People like to see him going after the CCP with a very, very strong arm. Uh, so, do you have any good news to share with us, or do you see any optimistic things in this trip of yours to the U.S.? I work out for another two, three weeks, and if it's successful, of course, good. If not successful, then I give up. What can I do? So, do you have anything to say or any suggestions to our audience who are watching our program? I don't know whether your audience are. Uh, Republicans or Democrats, all right? But I believe you have to be tough with CCP. And I don't, I don't see uh, uh, Biden being tough. In fact, you know, he's been making money on, on, on CCP, from CCP. So do you have any other things that you'd like to say that I haven't asked? Sorry, no, <laughs> I've been telling you everything I believe, you know, straight from my heart. So, uh, you know, I don't even know who your audiences are. So, but that's what it is. You know, that's why I'm here. I'm trying my best. Um, you talk about designating the CCP as a tourist organization. So, tell us a little bit more about it. So, who can uh, start such an initiative? So, what's the legal aspects of it? In the 80s and 90s, or in the 80s and 90s, you 80s. New York used to be a terrible city, all controlled by the crime families. Right? Mm -hmm. You've seen The Godfather, right? The movie. And uh, there are five families. They control New York. And a uh, lot of crimes, very heavy crime. And, uh, and, and 40, uh, 42nd Street used to be all pornography uh, and prostitution. So, so I've been coming here since the 60s. So, so what happened is they have passed, uh, Mayor Giuliani has passed this uh, RICO law, racketeering law, which says that if you, belong the, if you belong to a crime family, every member, you don't have to prove any crime, automatically is a criminal, right? And you can arrest them and put them in prison. So he basically cleaned up New York City. That's why you have a very nice, much cleaner New York City than before. So we are using the same law by naming the, uh, the uh, CCP as a criminal organization. All the 90 million members will be considered as criminals and will be sanctioned. So you should look up RICO. The short name for that law is R-I-C-O. So there is a law. So how will this work out? So uh, who are you going to working with to get this initiated against the CCP? So I, I plan to come to New York and uh, work on, uh, on a, 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 a federal prosecutor to go to a federal court suing the uh, CCP as a criminal organization, same as the mafia. And if the judge rules, then every CCP member will be considered as a criminal. So you need to work with a prosecutor in New York. Who is who's, uh, sympathetic and, and, and you know very well, New York is the worst hit pandemic. And yeah. the responsibility of the pandemic is China, we all know. So only a prosecutor can do this, not an ordinary US citizen or yourself? You can do it, but you don't have the finance to go to court. 
you know, such a lawsuit can cost $10 million or even $50 million. The communists have an unlimited budget. Yeah. But personally, how can we fight uh, with, with the Chinese government? So we need the government. A pros public prosecutor is using the government fund, so they can afford. Uh, are you seeing any promising aspect of this effort? No, I'm coming to New York, and hopefully we can uh, find the right, uh, right uh, public uh, federal prosecutor. Okay, I hope you good luck with everything you do, and I do hope the people of Hong Kong can win in the end. They are at the front line of the battlefield between the free world and the CCP. Like I said many times before, they are not fighting only for themselves, but fighting for the freedom of everybody in the world. The battleground. Yeah. And uh, but uh, but uh, I hope that uh, President Trump will will, will 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 really stand up and uh, put on a good fight. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Yuan, for talking to us. I do hope you good luck. Thank you. Hope to see you sometime. Thank you. Bye bye.